So hey everybody, today is Monday, June 5th, 2017, and I'm going to bring you along on a bike ride with me. It's been pretty rainy today actually, and it's a little bit colder than it has been the other days. So I really should have rode on probably Friday, but anyway, and it's getting later too, I think it's around 4.30 in the afternoon. But uh, I'm just trying to get this ride in anytime I can. Today I'll try to ride up to Bomberg. It's a, a relatively long ride from my house. I, I don't know, maybe it'll take two and a half hours from my house back and up to the top and all the way back. It's a little bit breezy, a little bit cool. Not cold, but kind of cool. At the moment, I'm riding pretty slow, about 19 kilometers an hour. I like to save my energy for when I get onto the mountain. There's a couple of people in front of me on this trail. I think being that the weather's just now improved over the past couple hours, a lot of people are trying to get out and get some exercise. Oh, she was going fast. I like riding on these little walking paths or bike paths, whatever you call them. But uh, they're kind of fun, but you got to watch out for other bikes and other walkers. Some days uh, these paths will just be totally packed, especially along the river here. Especially like in the summer when it gets a bit hotter. This is a pretty nice uh, bike, little bike tour that I'm doing. It's, uh, I would say, medium difficulty for me. Not that hard, not that easy. Uh, Mostly it'll be on the street or on simple paths like this. It's, it's not a technical mountain bike course by any means. More for fitness than uh, skill building. Oh wow, it's closed. I've never seen this before. That sucks. Can't cross here, huh? Alright, let's go the long way. Alright, right after this bridge, basically, is where the incline will start. So I guess that's not too bad to get out to a place to start going up hills. 20 minutes. Now I'm at, at one of the hills, the beginning. As you can see at this point, there's no bike path. Just gotta hope cars see me. Don't run me over. Because there's so many bicyclists in this country, I think people are pretty aware of bikes, so I've only had a couple slightly close calls. Maybe a couple where I've had to, to move a little bit myself if I didn't want my bar scraping somebody's car. But I mean, I ride my bike to work every day. So not very far, about 12 kilometers round trip. But you know, if you do that basically, every day you know you're bound to run into somebody that's either not paying close attention or they're a little bit rude 
and they'll you know ride too close but it doesn't happen much you know that's every few months maybe something like that definitely not every week not every day most days everybody keeps a good distance but on my way to work and back I never am on a road like this where it has absolutely no bike path all of my all of my commute is has at least a line which indicates you know you can ride your bike there you can see right ahead of us is kind of where I'm trying to go but a little bit more to the left I think we'll see it in a second but basically it's the same height you got to get up up that mountain unfortunately right now it's a little bit obscured in the clouds hopefully where I'm going won't be and it looks like maybe where I'm going is just under the clouds maybe partially in them too but uh, I can see the top so where I'm going to so it's okay I'm going pretty slow at the moment only 15 kilometers an hour we are going up a slight grade and I'm trying to save my energy a little bit for the steeper part just shifted down one gear I'm in my middle chain ring in the front and somewhere in the middle in the back too I don't have no heart monitor or power meters anything like that all I have is a GPS watch it tells me my speed distance if I were to guess my heart rate is uh, well I don't know how high it is but it's definitely not near max but it's elevated Whew. we're actually going slightly down I think now so picking up speed shifted two gears maybe we're flat I'm at 19 kilometers an hour I really like riding my bike though such a nice feeling compared to sitting in the house just being on the computer watching TV stuff like that it's so much nicer being out here on the bike even on a less than perfect day to, like today You can kind of see where that V is, that's where I'm headed. So the left is covering the clouds, right is covering the clouds, right where it's a little bit lower. That's where I'm headed. There's a road where the cars can go that drives all the way up there, and that's what I'm gonna take. And that's why it's the lowest point, I'm sure, you know, it's the easiest way to get up and over this mountain over here. It's kind of like a pass. Now this part here, where that car is about to approach, this far gets quite steep. Um, I think I can do it without going into my small front ring, but I'm not sure. I, I, maybe I have to go into it, I don't remember. I'll, I'll just uh, have to play it by ear. I think I'm going to go ahead and try to turn the GoPro around because at this point I think I'm going to be going slow enough that the wind shouldn't affect it so much and I can talk to you may look totally ridiculous though maybe i'll switch it a couple times i don't know you'll be like looking out my nose and stuff yeah it's a lot funner coming down all right let's try to turn this around while we're on the bike shifting down on the back one shifting down again we reach nine kilometers just there that beeping you hear sometimes is my GPS watch. Okay. Um, this is a bit tricky to do while riding, but I think I can do it. There we go. Got to tighten it now. I need to shift down too. <laughs> there we go. Okay. This may look totally ridiculous. <laughs> Looking up at me like this. Maybe for some of you it will make you dizzy. Okay, now I'm in my 
lowest gear in the back. It feels pretty good. I'm gonna take these earbuds out now. Sometimes I listen to music while I'm riding. Especially when it gets really steep and really tough. Kind of keeps me moving, I don't know why. I listen to a lot of different types of music. I listen to, uh, I don't know, a lot of rock and roll. Heavy metal. Stuff like System of the Down. I was just listening to. Also listen to some hip hop. Uh, a lot of different stuff. Just a big mix. I have this little MP3 player that has a few hundred songs on it and I just put it on shuffle. So it's feeling a little bit harder than I thought at this point, so I may have to go to the small ring in the front when it does get steeper. It's going very slow at the moment, seven kilometers an hour. I can run faster than this probably. But I haven't been doing much riding lately, so probably not in my best riding shape. Let's see if I can pick it up just a little bit. But as always, I don't want to wear myself out so that I can't finish this ride. But I'm pretty confident I can finish this ride without too much trouble. I've done this one several, many, I still say many times. And uh, used to be really hard, of course. Uh, as of the last year and a half or so, it's not that hard. In fact, I can go even further than this. I can go up here, then take a left, go across up to Weissenstein, and keep going. So, I know, uh, I know I can do it. it. Just depends on how fast. And I have my Garmin GPS watch tracking the time in the GPS, so I'll know how fast I am compared to my other attempts since I got the watch somewhere like 2015. I track all that stuff on Strava. I'll put a link to my Strava account in the description so you can follow it if you want. I really do enjoy Strava. Um, mostly I just like to compare myself to myself. So when I do a ride like this I like to see if I got a new personal record. I don't compete very much with other people. Well, for one thing, I don't know all that many other people on here, on Strava that is. And secondly, I'm not as fast as a lot of people, so I never get King of the Hill, or whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, King of the Hill. No, King of the Hill's not right. Is it? K-O-M. Anyway, I know I, I had to have it like on one run or something, but kind of obscure stuff. I get a little bit nervous when the cars are flying by at that speed. Anyway, Strava. I like Strava mostly just for myself, but uh, I do have some friends on there. I follow them, give them kudos. Let me see, they've done something. It's actually taught me some rides, which is cool. You know, some some paths that I've seen other people do, and I've gone out and done it myself. So that's that's good. It's getting hot now. Just thought I'd stop here one second to show you where I'm at. It's a really nice view. You can see some uh, sheep down there. That's where I'm headed up there in the clouds. Back that way is my house. Pretty beautiful place here. But right about now is where the, the ride actually gets harder. And I don't know, it probably takes around 30 or 45 minutes of pretty hard riding to finish this uh, climb. I've been going 47 minutes now. Hey guys, I'm on my one hour check-in still on my way up. It's definitely gotten steeper, but I've managed to avoid putting it in the small ring on the front. So I still have a little bit more 
leverage if I need it. Everything's going fine. I have a good pace right now. Um, yeah, it's a good ride. I've had uh, one person pass me by, a road bike, and uh, I definitely don't see him anymore. Uh, I haven't made any stops other than uh, other than the one just to show you where I was at. Yeah, got some good music playing. I was just listening to some Static X from like, I don't know, 2001 or whatever. That's pretty good music to keep me moving. Okay, that's about all I can say. I'll uh, do another check-in when something interesting happens or I reach the top. I'm guessing it'll only be about 30 more minutes. Okay guys, well I'm almost to the top of Mount Berg, maybe another two minutes. Everything's going good, having a lot of fun. Didn't get rained on, that's a plus. Once I get to the top, I'll stop and talk to you a little bit more. There's a mountain biker behind me. He was gonna pass me, but I think I picked the pace up a little bit because we're at the end. And now he's a little ways back. All right, Let's see if I can push a little bit harder to reach the top. I mean, I know this isn't gonna be a record ride or nothing I'm pretty sure of that but hopefully it'll be a decent effort every once in a while I like to stand up let my legs stretch otherwise sometimes things start falling asleep <laughs> so every I don't know five minutes I stand up and ride for I have no idea so if you get tired Usually I shift one or two gears higher for that. Standing up now. I'm pushing a pretty heavy gear right now. It's taking a lot of energy. There's my watch, let's see. 15 kilometers. Okay, here's what I call the finish. I'm gonna sit down, shift down a few gears. <laughs> I love doing wheelies going up. It's so easy. Pop the front end up on a little hill. And that's it. That's the Bomberg ride. It's hard. <laughs> Hang on, let me stop this music. So that's where I just finished the, the real ride right there at that street where those cars are. I don't know if you can see them or not. That's kind of the end. I just came down this trail for a nice place to sit. I thought I'd go ahead and show you what's in my backpack and what I eat and drink on these type of rides. It's only been one hour, 28 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and stop my GPS watch for this for this rest so it's not using the batteries. First of all, for my backpack, I'm just using this regular, I guess, mountain biking backpack. Um, it was really cheap. I got it on sale for 10 bucks here in Switzerland, actually. It had a water bladder in it, but I don't really use that. I use a water bottle on my bike, so uh, I took that out for some extra space. So let me show you what I have inside. And this is basically the minimal stuff that I'll ride on a you know mountain bike ride that's like an hour plus in a mountain in the wilderness. And it's not much, it's not much. This is really uh, minimal. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not one to carry a lot because even in Switzerland here, at least where I'm at in this area in the, in the Solitorn Jura mountain range, 
there's people everywhere. There's cars right there. Um, worst case, I could walk down the mountain. It's not like I'm so far. I don't know how far I was. Maybe 10 kilometers or less from like cities. So I don't worry about having too much. But I'll show. You, let me show you what I have. First of all, I grabbed this out. This is a, a buff, or you know, you can put it over your on your neck, on your head. It weighs almost nothing, and if it's really cold, it's great to have on your face or over your head or something like that. So I almost always carry this because it's so small and light. And when it's cold, it's, I don't know, nice to have something extra. Let's see what else I have. Of course, I have my, my busted phone. Um, this, of course, everybody knows in case there's an emergency or whatever, it's great to have your phone. If I'm going on a far ride, I'll put it in uh, airplane mode so the batteries stay good. Uh, I always bring some tissues. You know, blow your nose and stuff. I think I need to use it now, in fact. <laughs> um, let's see. That's another thing that weighs nothing, so you might as well bring it. It doesn't take that much space either. Of course, my car keys, my house key, stuff like that. I have a bike pump, just a real cheap one. It does work, but it's not very... It's not so nice. Maybe I can set you here. There we go. Not much of a first aid kit, but basically I have some gauze in here and some band-aids. That's it. Oh no, here's the gauze, sorry. I knew I had some. These are just band-aids, here's some gauze. I like this because it weighs basically nothing. It's super light. Whoa. Um, here is a Allen key. Uh, you know, it's a multi multi-tool. Has screwdriver, Allen, flat, some basic stuff. I have a couple of tire, I don't know what you call these, tire uh, pry, pry things. <laughs> I think I have more than one. Well, I thought I had a few, but I see only one. <laughs> Whatever reason. Um, I have a very basic patch kit. And that's it, I don't have any inner tubes with me, because on these short rides, I rarely get a flat, although I did get one actually uh, yesterday, <laughs> funny enough. But uh, I rarely get a flat out here, and if I do, I'll try to patch it. If I can't, then I just walk. It's not that big of a deal. Or I can call somebody. So uh, Next, I have my, I have an ID and uh, 20 bucks. I, I don't bring my wallet because I want to keep it light. So just uh, an ID in case I get hurt, somebody can see who I am, and 20 bucks in case I need to buy something. I don't usually buy much on these smaller type trips. You know, what I pack depends on uh, where, I'm, where I'm riding. Today I knew it wasn't going to be far, it's in my kind of local area, so it's easy. And then sometimes, oh here's, here's another, hang on. Here's another one of those. And then today I just brought a couple pieces, a little roll to eat. I like bread because I feel like when I eat bread, I get a lot of energy, I don't feel hungry, and it weighs very little. I just put it in some saran wrap to keep it clean and fresh. I'll probably eat this right now. So that's all I bring for food usually, just some bread. Pretty basic, pretty extremely basic. basic. Anyway, that's, that's it uh, for my backpack, it's empty. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and eat my bread. Take that off. And show you what I, what I drink. Now I guess the one other thing I bring is my pocket knife. Sometimes I put it in my backpack, sometimes I just leave it in my, on my uh, pants, on my pocket. And then on a hike like this or a ride like this, I'll just bring a standard uh, water bottle, put it on my bike frame. And that's it for nutri nutrition and nourishment, just, uh, what's that, one liter of water and a couple rolls. Should be enough for a few hours. Unless it's really hot, maybe I'll take two waters and put one in the backpack or something. Hey guys, well I'm getting ready to head back down, but right before that, I'm going to go up this trail here and check this out. I've never seen, I've never noticed this trail before, although it looks pretty old. And just see what's up there, then I'll ride down, ride back down to the street. I would like to keep going further today. But it's already after 7 o'clock and I can feel it's starting to get colder. That's why I put this uh, this buff on my head just to warm me up a little bit, zip my collar up all the way. So anyway, enough rambling. I'm going to head up there, see what's up there, then head back down. 
put you on the handlebars, you can see the action. Probably not a lot of action, at least going up. Okay. Oh, almost slipped. These shoes don't have much grip at all. There's some really old running shoes of mine. Well, they're not ancient. They're a few years old, three, four years old. But they're totally worn out on the bottom. Well, this is a cool trail. I don't know if you can see it going way up there. That'd be fun to come down on the bike. But for that matter, I'd only try taking this way on the bike. Do an adventure, you know? I mean, I could come down that, that right there, which is the way I came up. It would be fun, but this is a mystery. I don't know what to, don't know what to expect here, so I'm going to go ahead and open up my shock. Lower my seat just a little bit, not much. I still want to be able to pedal, but right now it's, it's pretty high. I'm going to lower it down just a bit so I have some space to, a little bit of space to move. Okay, and I'm going to go down. I'm going to take it easy since, uh... Uh, well, number one, I'm alone up here. Number two, I've never been on this trail. So, I have to... Uh, have to go. Whoa. Got on funny. <laughs> All right, here we go. Pretty nice so far. You may not be able to ride this. Sometimes these are hiking trails you really can't bike. Okay, this isn't too bad. Nothing scary, just annoying. Oh, where is this going? Splits. I don't know where to go. Let's go down here. Oh, cool. I think we're at the llama park. Yeah, nice. All right, we're going to take the street down a little bit. It's getting really foggy up here now. And for that, I'll go ahead and lock that front fork back up. Or almost lock it. Whoa, it's cold. Cold, cold, cold. Probably won't go over 50. slippery on these rocks.
All right, let's keep going. other people wiped out. It's a scary little road actually. It doesn't look it. And it's and there's parts that are extremely steep. pretty fast there that was top gear on the bike and you could see how fast my feet were pedaling I don't know what speed I reached there maybe 60 Okay folks, that's pretty much the end of this ride. I'm not very far from home right now. It was a good ride, didn't get hurt. That's always good. Got a good workout, that's always good. Had some fun, that's always good. So that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this type of format of a video. Let me know if you like it, I can certainly do some more. It's pretty easy to make. I just <laughs> put my GoPro on the handlebar and ramble. So let me know. Well, the weather's really clearing up now. Huh. Yeah, even on the top of the mountain, I can see over to my left, it's looking somewhat sunnier. But that's expected. That's what the forecast showed. It showed as it got later today, it would improve. I think maybe I just was out a little bit too early. That's all right. I didn't get rained on. I got a weird uh, sound coming from my rear disc. And you can see it's my rear disc because if I apply a little bit of pressure, it goes away. So I don't know if the disc got warped a little bit or what. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, whatever, go ahead and leave them below. 